This is going to sound like an advert for Speaker Express. But I can assure you, absolutely no money has changed hands. At least, not yet. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to tell you a story about public speaking. It's a very personal story. It's my story. But before I do that, I just want to test the temperature in the room. So, who loves public speaking? Great. <laughs> I'll come to you in a moment. <laughs> who's terrified of it? And who's somewhere in between? This is you, sir. <laughs> Good. I used to be in the terrified camp because I suffer from a neurological condition which affects both my balance and my speech. So the thought of being on a stage, even one like this where I can't actually fall off, <laughs> terrified me. The thought of actually speaking and moving at one and the same time just seemed impossible. My solution is simple. I simply don't do it. <laughs> I don't do it at school. I don't do it at university. And in 35 years in corporate life, I don't do it either, except on that one occasion. That one occasion when I get caught out in Amsterdam on a management training course. And the tutor says ever so calmly just before lunch, after lunch, you'll all be giving a speech of five minutes duration on a topic of your own choice. It is the only time in my entire life when I have ever been involved in collective <gasps> hyperventilating. <laughs> my turn comes. I get up, I give my speech, I sit down. And the tutor says to me, Elaine, do you have any idea where you were when you gave your speech? And I'm thinking, what kind of a bonkers question is that? But I shake my head and she asks one of my colleagues to demonstrate. So this young woman gets up, she walks to the furthest corner of the conference room and she positions at least 90% of her body behind the flip chart. <laughs> and yes, my colleagues do what you do, they laugh because it's funny for them. But for me, this is a moment when I go, right, that's it, never more. But something happens to change my mind. Some years later, I have a serious cycling accident. So serious that I end up head first, face down, on the side of a drainage ditch. I stop breathing. I almost die. And that made me realise that I'd had enough of carrying around the burden of my fear. So I thought, OK. Mind you, it still took me two years to do anything about it. It's not that I've got a lot of time left on the planet. I haven't. I'm just genius at faffing around. But eventually, I learnt how to do it. And I discovered two astonishing things. One, I enjoy it. And two, I can be good at it. And now we're coming to the real point of the speech. I know, thank God you're thinking. I have a friend, actually surprisingly I have more than one, but this one is called Nick Williams. He wrote a book called The Work You Were Born To Do. Some of you may have read it. And he also has a favourite saying. And his favourite saying is, we are all the answer to someone else's prayer. Now just think about that. And think about it in the context of you and your business. We are all the answer to someone else's prayer. But how are those people going to find you if you do not do this? If you do not stand here and learn how to be your authentic self? And it doesn't matter whether you're talking to 20, like tonight, 
or whether you're speaking on the radio or the television. If you are authentic, people will recognise you as the answer to their prayer. So my challenge to you is very simple. Because tonight, for one night only, you have the opportunity to be here for one minute and practice. Actually, it happens every club night, but let's not get bogged down in the detail. <laughs> so, if not now, here, tonight, my challenge to you is when. When will you start to show up as the answer to someone else's prayer? That was incredible. Thank you, Elaine.